What is going on guys? So today on the channel we're going to be installing Windows 10 in VirtualBox on my old MacBook Pro. So I kind of got a little curious about how this would perform on an older Mac. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Installing Windows 10 in a virtual machine on an older Mac and see how it does. And I will show you this right here. So this is a 13 inch late 2011 model. So it is an unsupported uh, computer. It is vintage, as Apple would call it. And the latest version we can run on this is High Sierra, and it is 10.13.6. So let's go ahead and begin this installation and just see what happens. So the first thing you need to do is we need VirtualBox. So you go to virtualbox.org. You click this big blue download button as I'm recording this video. The latest version is 6.1. But whatever version it is, it'll be right here on the home page. So you just click that. And then it's going to take you over here to this download VirtualBox page. And since we're on a Mac, you want to click on the OSX host uh, link right here. And then it's going to begin to download the file, uh, the DMG file here. Now, I already have downloaded this. I've already installed VirtualBox. And you just want to open this up when it gets done and go through the installation process like you would any other Mac application. Now the next thing we're going to need is we're going to need a Windows 10 ISO file. So I didn't mean to go there yet. You just want to go to Google and just Google Windows 10 download. And when you do that, if you scroll down you should see a link that looks a little something like this. It says download Windows 10 disk image ISO file. Just click on that, and when you click on that, you're going to be taken to the Microsoft Software Download page. And you can scroll down right here and select the edition of Windows 10 that you want. So again, as I'm recording this video, the latest version is the May 2020 uh, version 2004. So you just click on that, whatever the latest version is, just click on it. Hit Confirm. And once you do that, it wants you to select the project language. So just choose your desired language. Hit confirm one more time and then once that gets done you'll have two download links one for the 32-bit and one for the 64-bit. So I am going to choose the 64-bit and that's probably the one that you should choose as well. Now take a look at this. This is a pretty good size file. It's five just a little over five gigabytes here and depending on your internet connection this could be done in a few minutes or it could be done in a really long time and it looks like my connection is suffering a little bit but I already have an ISO file for Windows 10 and if you already have one as well then you do not need to download another one but if you do not have one you can download it right here on this page so as you can see I have my ISO file right here this is actually a little bit of an older version of Windows 10 but it's the one that I use all the time so uh, this is my file. Now I do have a video on the channel showing you how to actually create a ISO file from an installation disk. So if you have an installation disk of Windows 10 for some reason, uh, you can simply just create a disk image using Disk Utility. And I will put a little link down below so you can check that out if you want. Or if you have an installation disk and you're on an older Mac like I am that has a DVD drive, then you just simply put that in to the DVD drive and you can run it in VirtualBox. All right, so now that we have VirtualBox installed and we have our uh, ISO file, we can go ahead and open up VirtualBox. Now, your screen is going to look a little different. This is just a test machine that I was doing earlier. And you're not going to have anything in this pane and you're not going to see any of this right here. All your stuff is going to be blank. So just totally ignore this right now. Uh, this is just, a, like I said, a test machine that I was doing earlier, so yours is going to be blank. Okay, so what you want to do is click on this new button. It might be over here uh, if you have a blank screen, but you just want to look for the new button wherever it is and click on it. And then you want to give your virtual machine a name. So I'm just going to call it uh, Windows 10. Uh, we'll just put second test for my purposes, but you want to put whatever you want right here and you want it to be a recognizable name in case you have a bunch of virtual machines at one point and this is what's going to appear in this pane over here so just come up with whatever name you want 
and you want to make sure your type is correct as well as your version. It's going to default to the 64 bit. So if for some reason you did download the 32 bit, you can just select it uh, right here. And then up here is where your VirtualBox uh, VM file is going to be stored. And this is most of the time the place you want to keep this at, whatever the default is. But you could put this anywhere you want it to. We're going to hit continue. Now we have the RAM here. So as you can see, it is recommending two gigs, which is about right for Windows 10. Uh, you may want to bump that up a little bit. You want to keep it in this green uh, area right here. So this host machine has eight gigabytes of RAM. And a good rule of thumb is you never want to go over half of whatever your uh, host machine has. So I could bump this up to four gigs and be okay, but you just do whatever you need to do right here and you can see this is in megabytes and not gigabytes so you may need to do a little conversion if you don't know but I'm just gonna leave this at two gigs but you can play around with this the good news is you can change this in the settings later so if you find your machines not performing right you can uh, change this uh, later on but you definitely want a minimum of two gigabytes so we hit continue and now it wants us to create a virtual hard disk, so we're going to have, leave it on this middle option and hit create. And we want the VirtualBox disk image. And we want dynamically allocate it 9 times out of 10. Uh, so basically, you can read this right here, but a dynamically allocate it, let's say you set the mach virtual machine space to 50 gigabytes. So over time, it's only going to use what it needs. It's not going to use 50 gigs right away. If you choose a fixed size, then it will take 50 gigs immediately away from your host machine storage. So dynamically allocated is the better option here in my opinion, but fixed size can run a little bit faster sometimes. So if you have an external hard drive or SSD that you want to use, you may want to choose fixed size. But hit continue. Then right here is where you can select how much storage you want. So again, you need to know your host machine. This computer is 500 gigs, so we should be pretty good uh, with whatever we put here. Uh, I would probably do a minimum of like 64 gigs. Uh, you could do the 50, but again, it all depends on what you're going to be using this machine for. I haven't really seen any Windows 10 computers that go below 64 gigs, but you know, do what you want. A typical install of Windows 10 is going to be, I think, like 15, 16 gigs. Again, determined by whatever you're using this machine for. If you're using it just goof off with viruses or something, you should be fine. If you're going to be installing a lot of apps and doing other things, you may want to increase that. It's really important, though, that this number cannot be changed once this machine's created. So you need to get this number uh, right, whatever you want to do. Once you get that right, you simply hit the create button and your machine is now created. So here it is right here. Now before we start this, we want to click on the settings button up here and just kind of look around a little bit in these settings. So there's really nothing to worry about in the general tab here. Now when you go to system, here is where you can change that RAM on the fly. So you can change this whenever you want to. Uh, I don't think we need a floppy disk anymore, so I'm just going to uncheck that. But you do not want to move this order right here. It's very important that the optical comes before the hard disk in the boot order. If you go to processor, you can actually bump your processor up if you want to. That can help with your virtual machine uh, performance, but I'm just going to leave it at 1 uh, for uh, the purpose of this video. If you have a really good processor in your host machine, this bar may look a little different to you. You can see I can only go up to two, and that's kind of pushing the limits. So I'm just going to leave it at one. If we go to display, we can uh, do our video memory here on the fly. I'm going to leave it the same here, but if you want, you can enable 3D acceleration, and you can even bump this slider up more to 256 megabytes, so you can have a little bit smoother performance. But for this video, I'm just going to leave that off. All that stuff looks all right. Right here is where you could insert a uh, disk or the ISO file into the drive, uh, but we're going to be able to do that when we start the machine, so you really don't need to do anything right here. And then all this other stuff is okay here, so 
Oh, one more thing. This is your shared folder, so you can have a shared folder from your host machine to your virtual machine. But all that stuff looks good to go, so you're just going to hit OK. And now we can finally hit that Start button right here, and it's going to boot up the machine for the first time. Now, you should get a prompt. looks a little something like this. Yours is probably going to be blank right here, but since this computer has a DVD drive, it's showing it right here. So the default that it would do is it would try to boot from a CD in the DVD drive. But since we're using an ISO file, you need to do one or two things. So number one, you can click this little uh, folder icon. Now when this menu opens up, yours is probably going to be blank right here. So what you need to do is click on this add button right here and you need to locate wherever your ISO file is. So here's where mine is right here. And once you do that, you just click on the open button. Now, since it was already in here, it didn't change, but yours will pop up here now. And then you can hit choose. And now it's gonna boot using your ISO file. So then you can hit the start button. And if you did it right, it should boot into the Windows installation process. Now the other way to do that if something wasn't working properly there, what you could do is click on this devices menu and you could uh, actually go to the optical drive and then you could choose a disk file right here and select it from there and then you would need to go over here to machine and hit reset and it should boot from the ISO file. Okay, so now we are in the typical Windows setup. So this is just like any other Windows setup that you would do. So just want to make sure all this info is right right here. And then hit next. And then we click on this install now button. Alright, so it wants you to accept the license terms. So we'll just go ahead and do that. And then I want to click on the custom install. And the reason why I like to do that is just to make sure that it's recognizing uh, whatever storage we gave it. So I gave it 64 gigs and there it is right here. So we're good to go there. You can hit next and once you hit next it's going to install Windows for you. So this is just a little waiting game here now. This could take a long time. It could take a few minutes depending on your computer but I will come back whenever this decides to get done. Alright guys, so after a few restarts here, it is now in the final setup questions. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and go through these really quickly off camera. Uh, they're just typical setup questions to finish up the install, so shouldn't take too long, but I will come back and hopefully at that point we'll be at the desktop. Alright, so after answering those setup questions, this is basically the final uh, loading screen that you're going to see here. Uh, so it's just finishing up a few things and we should be brought straight to the desktop once this is over with here. Alright, now we are here on the desktop. Now you can see it's acting a little funny here. It said it's searching for a display driver and it's asking about a network here. And the reason for that is because we need to install the VirtualBox guest editions in order to make everything work properly. So in order to do that, what you want to do is go up to your menu bar, click on the Devices tab, and then click on the Insert Guest Editions CD image. And what this is going to do is it's going to load in the guest editions application that you need in order to install them. So all you got to do is go into your File Explorer, once you do that, you want to go to this PC, and when you go to there, you should see in your CD drive here in a second, the guest editions pop up right here. So if you double click on this, it will then take you to some applications you can choose from. Now you want to choose this one right here, double click it, and it's going to open up the installation wizard for the guest editions. You may need to hit yes on a security prop there. Alright, so here is the setup window. We'll go ahead and hit next. Hit next again. Hit install. You may get a little security window uh, pop up here. You just go ahead and hit install. It's no big deal. Alright, so once this gets done installing, you want to go ahead and hit the reboot now and hit finish. 
and when this reboots all the drivers and everything the virtual machine needs will be installed and you will notice that your display will uh, become normal the correct resolution for your screen all right so we boot it back in and you should notice the display change here in a second once everything gets loaded up and there it is so we now have the correct resolution thanks to those guest editions and that's pretty much it guys from here on out you're good to go using your windows 10 uh, virtual machine on your old mac so that's pretty much everything you need to know one other thing you might want to do if you plan on using this for a long time is if you go into your windows 10 settings uh, you do need to activate Windows, but if you are just using the ISO that you downloaded from Microsoft's website, you technically don't have to activate Windows, but if you want, you can. Uh, it's really the only thing you're not going to be able to do is customize your PC, and it might nag you to update. But you get a little activation thing right here, you just click on that and put in your product key. But yeah guys, that's pretty much everything here for this video. I'm going to use this for a while on this old MacBook and see how it does because I've been kind of curious about it. I am going to have more videos about this coming soon, but for now, that's all I got today. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next video.